Hello, and welcome back to the Bot Spot. Today, we're going to conclude our three-parter with what is a preacher? Well, a preacher is one who speaks as the oracles of God, found in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. Because of this, one who takes the office of a preacher must be careful that what is spoken is congruent with his word. All right, so what are the qualifications of a preacher? First, a preacher must be male. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 12 through 15 state, And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Second, a preacher must be extremely careful when presenting a sermon. James chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 state, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. This isn't in regards to teaching, yes. But preaching is essentially teaching in a much larger scale. The whole congregation hears our preaching, so we must be hypercritical of our own study and presentation of God's word. And yes, the congregation is to do their own self-study, found in Acts chapter 17, but if we teach in error, we become a stumbling block to everyone there and everyone who could hear our sermons later. So because of that, a preacher must be knowledgeable regarding God's word. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 14 through 17. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. These are the commands that Paul gave to Timothy, who himself became a preacher. Those are the commands that any preacher should follow. If we wasted our time with empty words, babblings, gossip, or other fallacies, God's word would never be preached. We'd waste our time with nonsense and no one benefits. A preacher must know God's word well enough to use it in its proper context at all times. To deal with such emptiness or ignorance of God's word, we must do as Jesus did and say it is written. So what are some supposed qualifications for preachers that are not scriptural? First, you do not need to go to any seminary or college to be a preacher. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 1 through 5 state, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. God's word is simple by design and purpose. As such, it can be preached by simple men. Jesus himself was the son of a carpenter, and he chose mostly uneducated men to be his apostles some of which were even fishermen. You don't need the biases of those who are professors to tell you what God's word means. That's known as an appeal to authority fallacy. If you use large words to try to overcomplicate God's word, that is a stumbling block to the congregation as well. The point of preaching is to convince, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and teaching at 2 Timothy 4, 2. You can't do these things if your verbose verbiage leads to vexation in your vocation. 
Second, you cannot have a preacher for adults and a preacher for non-adults. Jesus never once prevented children from hearing his preaching. In fact, he went out of his way to use, his, use them as examples. We also must not prevent children from hearing the sermons we preach. In fact, parents can use these sermons as teaching experiences when they get home. Now, that also means that when we do preach, we must be mindful of all of our audience. If we preach in such a way that those little children are not benefiting, we're doing them a disservice. So with these examples, we've refuted a lot of contradictions people have about preaching. There are many more, and we will address more eventually. But just as Paul preached until midnight does not mean that I should as well. I'll close with this. Yes, preaching has a lot of warnings and dangers. It should be something we want to do. I certainly love doing so. I stand not to be seen. I speak not to be heard. But I preach because I have a mission, and that mission is saving souls. Next, we're going to continue a long series, well, we're going to begin, actually, a long series on what is worship. We'll discuss each of the parts of worship, but before that, we will have the second sermon I've ever preached. Thank you very much for your attention.